Hey, welcome to another episode. Today is my birthday, actually. So, so many years ago on this day, I was born into this world. So I was also born again later on when I accepted Jesus Christ and was filled with the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what Jesus says in John 3 about being born again of the Spirit and how that gives us the gift of eternity. So let's talk about it. Stay tuned because I got some questions at the end that you're not going to want to miss. John 3, let's read it. Let's go. All right, welcome to a brand new episode. Today, uh, we're going to be discussing, excuse me, the conversation that Jesus Christ has with Nicodemus and talking about being born again, talking about that big famous verse of God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. We're going to talk all the way through that today and talk about that conversation about what, how Jesus describes being born again, how Jesus describes uh, becoming somebody different when you accept and wh- when you start following him. Uh, so this is his own words, and that's why I want to dive into it. Uh, so that's why we're reading it today. Also is my birthday. Uh, so today is actually my physical birthday uh, from... 51 years ago uh, is my birthday today, and I haven't been born again for 51 years, but I want to talk about the differences a little bit between uh, being born of this earth and being born again in the Spirit. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, Let me get my glasses. Uh, While we're getting started here, make sure you check out the website if you haven't already, livingchristian.org. We're actually running a spring sale. Uh, You should use the code SPRING, get 20% off everything on the store. Uh, hats, sweatshirts, t-shirts. I'm revamping the entire thing, so I'm trying to kind of clean house uh, with what's in there. Uh, so take a look at it. There may be some of your last chances to get some of those styles in there. So uh, wrap them up, grab them up, uh, use the code SPRING uh, at checkout. Also, there's a bunch of Bible verse lists and blogs that I write, all sorts of stuff. Check it out at livingchristian.org. I appreciate it. So let's have a sip of coffee and let's dive into John 3. Actually, going to back up into John two just for that, those last two verses to set up the, the the meeting between Jesus and Nicodemus. Okay, so because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover uh, Passover celebration, many began to trust him, but Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what e- was in each person's heart. So, this is setting up the fact that. Uh, Nicodemus, one of the kind of the priests or one of the Pharisees, not Pharisees, one of the the, the religious uh, people of the time, uh, started to kind of question who Jesus was and started to think about, uh, well, is Jesus this Messiah person? He keeps talking this way, and, and most of the um, Pharisees of the time were just rejecting him, obviously. But Nicodemus was curious. Uh, so uh, uh, let's talk about uh, that in John 3. There was a man named Nicodemus a Jewish religious leader uh, who was also a Pharisee. Uh, After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. It's interesting that he called him rabbi, right? So he called Jesus teacher, rabbi, uh, acknowledging the fact that Jesus had before, before miracles, believing that Jesus was sent from God. Uh, It's pretty interesting. Uh, Verse 3, Jesus replies, this is the conversation I wanted to have and kind of wanted to explain to you guys today. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, this is a foreign concept uh, to Jewish people, certainly to the religious Pharisees of the time. They will not understand what what Jesus is talking about here in John 3, 3. In their minds, they were waiting for a Messiah to come, a mighty warrior to come, to rule over Israel, defeat the Romans, and uh, make them become free from persecution, free from Roman rule. Uh, That's what they were expecting, this mighty warrior um, to come in and kind of lead the government and lead them uh, to uh, free them from the Roman rule of the time, okay? So that's why they were confused. This is why this line that Jesus says is very confusing to them. I'll repeat it. Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, John 3, 3. Jesus says, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And of course, Nicodemus, confused, replies, what do you mean? 
explained Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his womb, mother's womb and be born again? Once again, brand new concept to these people, brand new concept to Nicodemus. He didn't understand what Jesus is talking about. So he continued in, in verse 5, Jesus replied, I assure you, uh, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the Spirit. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for a second. This line, this in Jesus, I'm sorry, John 3, 5, has caused a lot of confusion, debate amongst the you know our Christian community, trying to figure out what that means. Uh, a lot of people think that Jesus is kind of referring to being born of water, meaning that you have to be water baptized, right? And the Spirit, born of the Spirit. <clears throat> so the two uh, kind of uh, being born of is of being baptized and then accepting the Holy Spirit. So a lot, there's a lot of Christians that fall into that camp. I'm not saying it's wrong. That's a camp, right? And that's the justification of water baptism uh, being uh, required in order to see the kingdom of God. Uh, and now, but let's read 5 and 6 together. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the Spirit. Verse 6, humans cannot reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. So the other camp that people are in or is the fact that if you read the whole five through seven, they, they, I think I'm in this camp, quite frankly, think that he's talking about being born physically of your mother's womb that is talked about in verse four, and your water breaking, and that is the being born of water that Jesus is referring to. So you're born twice in this earth. You have to be born twice of this earth in order to uh, be born again and, and be with God in the kingdom of heaven, which is, one, you have to be physically born on this earth, right, that I was 51 years ago, and two, you have to be born of the Spirit uh, once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. So that doesn't, so that's, that's the kind of the justification of the second camp uh, which I'm probably in, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't think that specifically says that Jesus says that we have to be water baptized uh, in order to be uh, born again. Okay, uh, so let's go on to eight. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but you can't see where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. So what he's saying is, you, you know, just because you can't see this birth, right, this being born again of the Spirit doesn't mean that it is not true. How are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you that we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe that I'll tell you when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man... Once again, if you're not familiar with the terminology, this is a reference to the Old Testament Daniel book where Jesus, referring to himself as the Son of Man, which is the Messiah, has come down from heaven. But the Son of Man have come, has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on the pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. So Jesus, right out here, basically says he is the only way to, to heaven. That any everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. He's calling and explaining to Nicodemus that this is what the new order is. This is what the new law is. This is what the new way, the new path to heaven is only through him. All right. And of course, 16. Here's the famous verse, John 3, 316. I bet you didn't even know that these are Jesus' words. Most people don't know that. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. <clears throat> God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world. Most people don't know that those are, that's Jesus himself talking about himself. <clears throat> so God loved the world so much. He's explaining this to Nicodemus that you have to be born of the spirit. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not true. Right. And the only way to be born of the Spirit is through the Son of Man, through the Son of God, <clears throat> excuse me, which is Him. And then he explains why that's the case. Why is it that Jesus is the only way 
to the kingdom of God. And he explains it's because God so loved us, he so loved the world, that he gave us Jesus to come down and to pay for our sins and to provide us a new path to be with him. Okay? Verse 18, There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. I love that line because there's plenty of references in the Bible about being judged, about being the day of judgment by and standing in front of God and being judged for our actions uh, and, and how we acted uh, down here on earth. And what Jesus himself is saying is there's no judgment for believers in Christ. Okay? The, you, that the fact that, but if somebody does not believe in Jesus, they've already been judged for not believing. Verse 19, and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. I think that is a beautiful way of Jesus explaining the differences between believers and non-believers, is the fact that if you are a believer, if you are a follower of Christ, you will not be judged. You have already been accepted by God. But if you are a non-believer and you reject Jesus, right, there will be judgment. And why is that, that people reject Jesus? And he explains it right here in 19. God's light came into the world. Jesus came into the world. But people love the darkness more than light. People love their sin more than Jesus. They love their worldly lives more than than Jesus. They reject Jesus because they just can't give up that earthly desires that are pulling them away from God. Verse 20, all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. Wow. And he and obviously Jesus is the light in this scenario, right? And so everybody who rejects him, everybody who does evil are afraid of the light. They're afraid of Jesus because they're afraid to accept and and be shown for the sinner that we all are. For for us who have accepted the light, for us who have accepted Jesus, um, we understand that our sins will be exposed. We understand that the light will shine and the ugliness will be seen. We're just okay with that because we love Jesus so much and we accept him and we know that he has forgiven us if we go to him for that. The people that reject the light, the people that reject Jesus, don't understand forgiveness. They don't understand being born again. They don't understand that it's warmer in the light and colder in the darkness. Verse 21 says, But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see what they are doing, so that, that they are doing what God wants. So, couple things about John 3, and that's why I want to talk about this discussion with Nicodemus. One is, you need to be born twice on this earth. You have to be born once, right? And then you got to be born again. And what does that mean to be born again? It means that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You give your life to Him. It is no longer that you are living for yourself, but you are living for Him. And the moment that happens, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are born again to a new life. You are a new creation. And in that, you will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And if you don't, right, and if you don't believe that God sent his only son, if you don't believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven and you reject him, it's because you're scared of the light. You're afraid because you only want to live the way you want to live, selfishly, sinfully. For the ones that, like us, hopefully, everybody watching and living or listening to this and watching this right now, we have accepted Christ. We know we're not perfect. We know we need Jesus. And we're okay with the light being shown on our dirtiness. We're okay with the light being shown on our sins because we know that we are failed humans that only need Jesus, and Jesus washes us clean. He washes all the dirt off. He washes, he washes all the sin away. Okay? 
That is John 3. That is the conversation that Jesus was having with Nicodemus, trying to get him to understand how there is a new way, right? The old way is gone, the new way is here, and Jesus is here to establish the way to join God in the kingdom of heaven. So that's an interesting kind of conversation that he's having with a Jewish Pharisee at the time, who obviously was not a follower of Christ, but was certainly curious about it um, and curious about him. And so that's how Jesus explains. So if you're dealing with people uh, that are maybe you're unbelievers or maybe you're questioning or, or, or at least interested in why you're different uh, and why you follow Christ, use this conversation as a blueprint. Talk to them about the fact that you have to be born again. Talk to them about how you have to accept Jesus. Talk, about, talk to them about the fact that God sent Jesus here, his only son here, half of himself here, one of part of the Trinity here to live amongst us, die amongst us, be born again, and save us from ourselves, and save us from our sins. And if we don't accept that, we're going to continue to live in the darkness of this earth. Explain that the way Jesus explained it to Nicodemus, and it'll, it will certainly help them, hopefully help them, see the light. That's the good word. John 3, that's a good one. Uh, that is a good one, about being born again and accepting Christ. All right, let's, uh, let's have a pause here for a sip of coffee, and then we will uh, we'll dive into uh, some questions here, okay? All right, let's see what, <clears throat> we, what questions we have uh, loaded up here. All right, uh, Instagram is not working. It says there's 18 questions, but when I pull them up, it says no questions left. So let's uh, let's look at the comments to see what uh, questions we may have. Can we? Can you get baptized again? I think I talked about this in the last episode. Um, so if you do, if you are live here on Instagram, make sure you put your uh, question in the comments because Instagram didn't want to hang out today. Uh, uh, you can get baptized again, water baptized again, if you want to. Uh, once again, I'm going to reference what we just talked about in John 3, about being baptized and born again twice. Once you're born of the water, you're born of your physical mother, and once you are born of the Spirit. That's the important part about being born again. Water baptism is certainly an important statement of faith. It is a symbol of you washing away your sins. You should do it, absolutely. Does that mean you're not going to get into heaven if you don't do it? The thief on the cross was not baptized. And Jesus said he was joining him. So I, I, I'm, we could have that discussion separately, but I don't think there's anywhere in the Bible that reference that you can't get water baptized again as a sign of faith, as a shown of faith, as a rededication to your faith, as a rededication to Jesus. Knock yourself out. I'm not going to stop you. All right, let's see, um, let's see what other questions that we may have. I'm going to have to thumb through, so bear with me for a second. Can you share what you felt when you were, during my baptism? Sure. Uh, now, I was baptized long ago. Um, give me a sip, a sip of coffee. I grew up Southern Baptist. So we weren't baptized as infants. We weren't baptized as babies. Uh, we had to wait until we could make that decision ourselves. So I think I was right around I don't know, nine or ten. So I was pretty young at the time uh, in our church there where I grew up. Um, and so I, you know, the only thing I remember from that so many years ago was just I was nervous going into it because you had a lot of people watching you. Um, but the second that I was dunked into the water, all of that went away, if that makes sense. The nerves went away. Uh, it, it, from what I remember, um, the world went away. And, and, and in that moment, I was just with God, if that makes sense. Uh, and... and, and if you've been water baptized, you probably have felt the same way, where the world went quiet, if that makes sense. Um, you get dunked, at least the way we did it. You come out, people are cheering and so forth, but I don't remember hearing any of that. I just remember this calm, um, this calmness that went over me uh, of feeling uh, feeling different, right? Uh, so that's, that's, that's how I felt, all right? Sip of coffee and let's uh, see another question here. Now I will say now when I when I when we have baptisms at our church, I it, I, I get emotional. I gotta say I, I don't know why. It's just that um, seeing people give their lives to Christ just makes me uh, well up. 
All right, let's see other questions. Make sure you put your question in the comments if you're live here with me uh, because the uh, little question mark thing is uh, not working. Uh, do baptisms have to be public? We're going to talk about baptisms today, I guess. Uh, my mom doesn't want to do it in public. Uh, she has the anxiety she struggles with with a lot of people around. No, absolutely don't have to be public. Um, you could have it, uh, you know, in a in a river, or you can have it in the lake, you could have it in a, in a church. Uh, it is a public sign of faith, so I would encourage her to at least surround herself, surround herself with um, people that she loves, friends and family and so forth. It doesn't necessarily have to be with the full church if that is uh, stopping her. The most important thing is it's her and God. Make sense? All right. Let's see. Well, two more other questions. Uh, what are the best weapons against not stumbling into old sins? That is a great question. Uh, first, you know, the Bible talks about putting on the armor of God uh, to protect uh, yourself from sin, protect yourself from this world, uh, protect yourself from attacks from the devil. And what does that look like? Uh, first and foremost, there's a, a lot of things that you can do. What I've found is uh, the closer your relationship is with Christ, um, the, the more armor you have on, if that makes sense. Uh, and there are many things that I take uh, from everything. Uh, what I mean by that is this. Uh, uh, try to dive into my Bible and spend quiet time with God every day. Uh, I like to do it in the mornings for about 30 minutes. I'm not always perfect about that, depending on what my day looks like. Uh, but I do find my day goes a whole lot better if uh, I spend a nice 30 minutes with me and God uh, reading the Bible, praying, and just in a little bit of calmness and peace before my chaos of my day uh, starts. So my first bit of advice would be that. Uh, try to start your day off with quiet time with the Lord, uh, and that will help you put that armor on. That'll help you defend from falling back into kind of uh, your sinful behavior. Now, we're all going to fail, that is for sure, but one of the things I try not to do is go back to old sin. Like, I try to learn those lessons. So if I have a closer relationship with God, uh, spend time with Him in the morning, and then kind of scatter my day throughout, uh, whether it's music or entertainment or social media, uh, whatever that may be, uh, try to surround myself with uh, kind of Christian thoughts and Christian entertainment and so forth. It, it does help me keep that focus all day long. And the other thing, the last thing I'll say, is prayer. Uh, you know, a lot of people just pray at night, or they just pray... Uh, before their meals, whatever that may be, try to get into in, into the habit of just talking to God all the time, uh, and, and you'll find that that changes your perspectives on a lot of things. It's funny. Um, there sometimes I have very organized prayer to where I'll sit down and pray uh, in bed or in the shower or while I'm reading my Bible or whatever that may be, and sometimes I just have a rando thought that um, I just talk to God in my head. Uh, for, you know, 30 seconds, uh, whether it's asking for advice or thanking him for something or just kind of telling him my thoughts. Um, it sounds like I'm a crazy person, but I promise you it, it, uh, it will change, uh, your relationship whenever you're sitting there and your first thought is, Hey, I gotta tell, I gotta tell God about this. Uh, so try to, try to continue your prayer life all day long. Uh, it will, uh, definitely change your perspective about dealing with things and going back to old sin. All right, uh, one more question, and then uh, we'll get out of here so I can enjoy the rest of my uh, my birthday. Uh, let's see what other qu questions we have. All right, sorry for the stalling. I got to scroll through all these uh, comments and with uh, Instagram not paying attention. Um, I was baptized as a baby. Should I get baptized again? I, I, I kind of reference that. Yeah, knock yourself out. There's no nothing going to stop you from that. Um all right, what is the best uh, Bible translation to read? I, I've answered this before on, on episodes, but in case you're new here, I use the New Living Translation uh, Bible. That's the one I use, and mainly not for the translation. It's it's called the Everyman's Bible. You can see that if you're watching here on the screen. And uh, um, I liked it because it has kind of advice and references to being a father, to being a husband, to being a guy, to being a, being a, uh, you know, a man in there. So I gravitated towards that. Uh, and somebody bought this for me years and years ago. Uh, I've got a lot. If you're um, watching this on, on YouTube, you can see the full screen, but uh, if you're on Instagram, you can't. Over here, I have a bookcase, and I've got, I don't know, 20 Bibles uh, from my father, from my grandfather, from my family. I've collected them throughout the years. Uh, some of them are King James. Some of them are ESV, uh, NIT, uh, NIV, rather. 
I've got a bunch of different translations. So what I would say to you is the best one is the one that you're going to read. I say this all the time. If you followed me for a long time, you've heard me say this before. The best translation for you is one that you're going to pick up and read on a daily basis. If you pick up a good news Bible and you think it's too lax and common, then you're not going to read it. If you pick up a, a King James uh, Bible and it's too confusing to you, you're not going to read it. Uh, pick up one, find one that is uh, good for you, that you like the language that you will dive into. Now, I, I have plenty of King James Bibles over here, but I don't read them on a daily basis because I'm just used to the language being used in the New Living Translation. And if I find it difficult, I may not dive into it as much as I should. That's my answer. Uh, find a translation, download the YouVersion Bible app, flip through the different translations to see which one makes sense to you and what you like. You could just go to, a, uh, you know, open up Matthew, start reading Matthew, and then flip back and forth between the versions on the YouVersion app and see which one that makes sense to you. But dive in. The most important thing is, is not the translation. <clears throat> it is the, the, the time you spent reading it. All right? That's it. Sip of coffee. Let's have a prayer here. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing John 3 to us today. And we know that it tells us how to understand how to be born again. It tells us how to understand to accept Jesus. It tells us the why to accept Jesus and the how to accept Jesus and what happens if we don't accept Jesus. We, we're so grateful for that wisdom. We're so grateful for that knowledge. And I'm praying, whoever's watching or listening to this right now, it arms them with the information to not only help their own faith, but possibly help somebody around them. We know so many years ago, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, and that conversation still rings true today and explains everything that you want us to know. We're so grateful for that knowledge. Thank you so much. I'm praying for everybody watching and listening to this right now that they have a wonderful day, that their family is blessed, that you help them put on the full armor of God to defend them against their sin, to defend them against this world, and they only become closer to you because of it. We love you and we trust you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for the birthday wishes that I got here on live. If you're missing these episodes, check them out on the podcast. Till next time, keep Jesus on your heart. And forever in your mind. Love you guys. See you on Monday.